Today, we're going to take a walk into the shadowy world of our favorite ghost type Pokemon, Gengar. One of my favorite Pokemon of all time. The ghost with the most. From its very first appearance in 1999 at the beginning of Pokemon to the absolute monster, pardon the pun, that it has turned into to today. Gengar has captured the hearts and minds of many, scaring some and haunting decks for decades. Whether you're a fan of the artwork or just somebody who likes Gengar because of his tricks and mischievous behavior on the battlefield, this ghostly guide today will cover all of the Gengar cards from the very beginning of the Pokemon TCG up until now in October 2024. Let's kick it off where it all started in 1999, where Gengar first featured in the Fossil set. Just look at that mischievous grin with its purple vibe and dark mind attack, the type of artwork that could leave shivers running down your spine. This card was a must have for spooky collectors, but also well received in gameplay. This bad boy was the reason why some trainers felt their deck had a little extra spirit. <laughs> Next, we have Sabrina's Gengar from Gym Heroes, which in the English version was actually corrected because it was a banned card compared to the Japanese counterpart, which featured a graveyard in the background. In the English version, it was actually changed so that the graveyard did not appear. Gengar did, however, look very menacing in this, and the move Pain Amplifier put a damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon that already has any damage counters on it, which proved very, very useful in the game. Next, we move to Sabrina's Gengar from Gym Challenge. Here, the card shows Gengar grinning whilst the moon is in the background. It's quite a basic artwork, but actually really, really iconic. I really like this card. Next, we have Dark Gengar from Neo Destiny. Now, this card is quite a basic card artwork, although obviously if you see the card in person, it makes a huge difference to what it looks like. In my opinion, this Gengar from Neo is really, really cool, uh, has some really powerful moves with the Pokemon Power Deep Sleep. Now, fast forwarding on to Legendary Collection, the artwork for this Gengar again is very, very similar to the one in Fossil. In fact, the card is almost exactly the same, so nothing much to report here. Enter into the 2000s. In 2002, we see the emergence of the e-reader cards with Gengar from the Expedition set. One of the powerful moves with this card was allowing Gengar to switch with one of your bench Pokemon, which was truly awesome. And then we fast forward to 2003 with Gengar from Sky Ridge. Gengar got an ethereal upgrade. This version of Gengar sneaking through a graveyard looks like it's about to pull off some kind of ghostly heist. Its ability to manipulate damage counters made it more than just eye candy. This Gengar haunted its opponents in battle. All right, buckle up for 2004's EX Fire Red and Leaf Green Gengar. This one, <laughs> it is a beast. Featuring Gengar looking way more sinister, your opponent had one serious nightmare on their hands. It became an instant fan favorite. This was also the first time we were able to see Gengar with a holographic border on a card, which truly made it stand out from all the other cards previous to it. Then we have Gengar from Legend Maker with its Super Cybolt attack. Not much to say about this card other than it has a different unique pose showing Gengar from the top. I think it's pretty cool. Then in 2007, we were introduced to Gengar in Diamond and Pearl with attacks such as Life Drain and Shadow Dance. Gengar sat on a stump, sneakily laughing, wondering what his next trick is going to be. Next, we have Gengar from Stormfront, which again has some really cool artwork with the Poltergeist move, allowing you to look at your opponent's hand. Then in 2009, we have three Gengar cards with average artwork. In my opinion, you have Rising Rivals. You also have Arceus as well as the Arceus Gengar, which is the alt art or the level 46, which is slightly different than the level 44. In my opinion, I prefer the artwork on level 46, the LV46 card with the Poison Jab doing 60 damage and poisoning the defending Pokemon. 2009 also gave us Gengar level X, and this is where things got real intense. This card gave our sneaky ghost a sleek, high-tech makeover with a glow-up that screamed, I'm not just here for tricks, I'm here to win. Gengar level X came with the level down power, making it a menace in the strategy department. This card was just as deadly as it was cool. Fast forward to 2010, 
we introduce Prime Gengar from the Heart Gold Soul Silver series. If Gengar wasn't already haunting your dreams, this version had a holographic treatment that made it pop off like a card like no other. It looked as if Gengar was really coming for you. Its ability Catastrophe could easily turn the tide of a game. When Prime Gengar hit the field, it was ready to dominate. 2014 then gave us not just one, but two iconic Gengar cards, Gengar EX and Mega Gengar EX. These two cards had a killer tag team vibe about them. Gengar EX brought the pressure, while Mega Gengar EX came in with the Phantom Gate ability that let you copy any move from your opponent. Let's just say that if you were playing against the Mega Gengar, you'd be in for a right scare. 2011 brought us two Gengars from Phantom Forces, one being the Gengar EX and two the Mega Gengar EX. Both cards had exquisite artwork. We then had the Gengar from Breakthrough with its Creepshow and Sinister Fog attacks and a very basic Gengar from Crimson Invasion with the Fade to Black at 70 opponent damage. Now for 2019 and one of my favorite cards of all time, the Gengar and Mimikyu GX from the team upset. This one was really cool because it has a mischievous power with Mimikyu. The Gengar and Mimikyu tag team card was everybody's favorite. It is definitely my favorite. These two tricksters worked in perfect harmony using their Horror House GX attack to trap opponents in a haunted nightmare where they couldn't play the cards. I mean, if that's not a scary good time, what is? Team Up also had this alternative version of Gengar and Mimikyu GX which is also a pretty cool card, highlighting both characters with a blue border. Again, stunning artwork, I really, really like it. And finally, from Team Up, we also have the main Gengar Mimikyu GX card, which is actually the most valuable from the set. Uh, we also have a rainbow version of Gengar and Mimikyu. Both cards are truly awesome. You've got the Horror House GX moves on there and pretty much exactly the same type of playability for both cards. An honorable mention also being the Gengar from Unbroken Bonds as well as Chilling Rain. Then we have the Gengar V and Gengar V Max from Fusion Strike, both awesome cards. The Gengar V is pretty much a standard full art V card. And then you have the Gengar V Max, which is kind of like a watered down version of the Gengar V Max alt art from Fusion Strike, which is one of my favorite cards. I managed to pull this on the channel uh, with my son well into the beginning of my journey into collecting sealed Pokemon product as well as Pokemon cards. The artwork on this card is absolutely stunning. You have to see it in its flesh to believe it. I think it is one of the best cards ever created by Pokemon as an alternative art for this particular species. Now fast forward to 2022 in Sword and Shield and we have Gengar from Lost Origin. This is a trainer gallery card. Again, very, very cool card. I really, really like the artwork and it's something very different compared to some of the older cards, if you remember correctly. And finally, to cap it all off with our favorite Ghostly Trickster for Gengar from Temporal Forces, we have three different cards. We have Morty's Conviction, which isn't really a Gengar card, but still features Gengar heavily, as well as the Gengar EX. Both versions, you have the standard EX and you have the full art. I do like the full art a lot. It's an amazing card. You've got tricky steps with 160 damage. You may move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. Now, both EX cards feature exactly the same moves, exactly the same abilities. And in my opinion, the artwork on the, the full art Gengar EX is absolutely stunning. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my trip down the Gengar memory lane. One of my favorite Pokemon. Also, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving away one of these hats to one lucky subscriber. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like this window. Comment down below and let me know which of these Gengar cards is your favorite card. Yes, I have maybe missed a couple of cards in the middle. There's a few promos and a few very, very standard basic Gengar cards that I didn't feel were necessary to cover in this video. Otherwise, it would have been way too long. But let me know which is your favorite Gengar card down in the comments below. If you did like this content, please do remember to subscribe, like this video, comment down below to also be in with a chance to win. Let me know. You have to let me know which Gengar card out of all of the Gengar cards that have been released is your favorite. And I will announce the giveaway winners in the next video. The giveaway winner for the last giveaway for the Temporal Forces ETB is down in the description. Make sure you email me at this email address 
within one week to be in for a chance. Otherwise, you will lose your opportunity. Guys, I thank you so much for watching through this and I will catch you on the next one.